Every single year I write myself a letter on Christmas day and the following year I open it. Why do I do that? Well, because in 2018, someone gave me this great idea and told me that in life, there is no greater gift than the one of progression. Whether that's progression in your health, in your relationships, in your business, whatever the progression, there is no greater feeling than getting better each year and being able to reflect on where you've come from. So in this video, I wanted to give you two pieces of advice that I think will increase your chances of making next year a huge success. And make sure you hang around because the second one will help you set your goals for the next year. You know I love a goal setting video. Now the first thing to share with you quickly is just what I've just told you there, which is writing yourself a letter on Christmas morning. If you're like me, then the feeling of waking up at 6 a.m. to open the latest Micro Machines toy set doesn't quite hit the same at 30 years of age. Doesn't mean I don't try it though. But I am lucky enough to recreate that similar feeling to myself by writing myself a letter each year. Now, it's less of a letter, more of a list of predictions for the following year. But each year when I open it up, there are many achieved goals, there are some missed goals, and there are some complete changes in direction. But that is part of the fun of it. That's why I love it. And I highly recommend that you try the same. Now, the second thing and the larger part of this video that I want to share with you is I want to give you something you can actually leave this video with. Call it a little gift from me. You see, it's become almost a bit of a tradition for me to release a video on this exact date each year. And in both my previous videos, I have given away a free downloadable document. And I am not one to break traditions. My second piece of advice is to become relentless with tracking your goals. Follow my exact step-by-step -step process that I share with you today, and it will be almost impossible for you to not go away and level up over the next 12 months. So rather than just simply walking you through next year's goal setting document, I wanted to give you some actionable pieces of advice you can use alongside this document. So let's get started. Firstly, you need to understand the power of marginal gains, the good ones and the bad ones, because the power of tiny gains can often swing in both directions as I'm sharing on screen right now. A good example of this is if you don't brush your teeth for a day or a week, then you're unlikely to see a problem. Not much harm has been done. But if you don't brush your teeth for a year or a decade, well, you're unlikely to have any teeth left and you're probably gonna have very bad breath too. The compound effect truly does work in both ways. So we need to make sure that we are doing these small but positive daily tasks over and over again that work towards a much bigger goal. You see, you've probably heard the saying, we overestimate what we can do in one year, but we underestimate what we can do in 10 years. And I really believe this to be the case. I can look back on the years of uh, 2019 and 2020 and I think that I didn't accomplish very much. But then I look back on the last five years as a whole and I'm blown away with what I've been able to achieve. So instead of approaching your goal setting as a way of telling your ego that you're gonna be a millionaire in six months, think about what habits you can realistically build into your week in order to achieve an oversized outcome over a longer period of time. Now I'm gonna take some of these habits and I'm gonna pair them with time blocking in a Google Calendar as a kind of working example. So here is an example that you can hopefully take some advice from and implement some of this into your own life. The example person I've called Fred. His goal is to purchase one buy to let over the next 12 months. And his potential struggles that he has told me is lack of knowledge, lack of available time, and lack of confidence. What are those three things? So what do they have in common? Well, they are all excuses. So we just have to make time and try to work around them to the best of our ability. So firstly, let's say that Fred wants to improve his knowledge. We need to think about adding set times into his diary in order for him to level up his property knowledge. We can do this quickly with a mentor or a course or some kind of education, or we can do it free using YouTube, Google, etc., like you literally are right now. Let's place one hour, two times per week into Fred's diary. And in this example, I'm going to say that Fred plays badminton on a Tuesday evening and he takes his kids to football on a Thursday evening, okay? He's a fairly typical busy life, working in the day, stuff in the evenings. Therefore, I will add times on a Monday and a Wednesday evenings for growing Fred's property knowledge. Just a one hour here, one hour there. Next is setting time aside for viewings. Let's say that Fred works 9 a.m. till 6 p.m., Monday to Friday. I'm going to place two hours aside 
for Saturday morning viewings. This is best because if Fred's investment area is local, say within an hour, this is absolutely doable. However, if Fred's investing away from home, a bit like I do, then he'd need to plan ahead and possibly use his uh, works annual leave creatively in order to pursue his property investing goals. Lastly, I'm going to place one hour on a Sunday morning for Fred to get up in the morning, review his viewings and do his full deal analysis and due diligence, and then draft his offers in an email ready to go Monday. And then at some point Monday in his break, he'd have to call the agents then submit the offer. This time can also be spent reviewing properties viewed in previous weeks to see if they are still available or if something has become re-available. Now, Fred has already given me resistance about that Sunday time work block. He said, look, I can't I have a wife, I have children, and a Sunday is a no-go. The whole house is up by 8 a.m. and it's absolute chaos. Like, I can't do it. So do you know what I said back to Fred? I said, get up at seven, get up earlier, okay? Chase your goals, make it happen, stop making excuses. That is one of my main tips when it comes to goal setting. My next recommendation to you is to learn the art of saying no. Admittedly, this is very rich coming from me. I seem to repeat the same cycle over and over again where I keep saying yes to things, I take on too much work, I get overloaded, then I reduce my workload, then I think I'm not busy enough, I repeat the cycle. So we're all a work in progress on this one. But one thing I do know is that saying no can be a very powerful tool to use. And it allows you to give more focus and time onto the small amount of tasks that you did say yes to. So inevitably, you'll be able to get better results on those smaller amount of tasks. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, then great work. Your commitment will be rewarded as I now want to show you my new updated goal setting tracker for this year. But before I go on, I want to explain the methodology that I use behind goals, which I believe that you should adopt. So I call this the 514 framework. It's exactly what we're going to be using in the document that you can download after. But I just wanted to walk you through it to give you an idea as to why I take this approach. Now, the 514 framework works like this. We set our goals with five years into the future because that's our North Star. That's our big, ambitious, but also somewhat realistic goal that we're going to set. Then obviously we need to think about what's coming up in the upcoming year. And then we need to think about, right, if we've got a year ahead of us, we need to break that down into four quarters. And obviously if we create a bit of a model out of this, we can actually create a realistic way of setting goals. For example, if we set our five-year goal is to buy 10 buy-to-let properties because that will replace our income, free us up from our job. And if that is the main thing that you are working towards, well, now you know, right, I'm gonna to need to buy two in the next year or two every year for the next five years in order to be on track and in line with hitting that bigger goal. And then of course, when it comes to the next four quarters of this year, it means you can break down exactly what you need to achieve in these quarters. So you might go, right, in the first quarter of next year, I'm doing lots of research, um, lots of building up my knowledge, starting to do viewing, starting to make offers, but realistically, I'm gonna find buy to let number one in quarter two. Then in quarter three, we might be looking to raise money or find a joint venture partner. We might be building up more funds. And in quarter four, we're gonna try and find number two. And if we continue to hit our year like this, well, then we know we're gonna be on track for our one year goal. And then if we manage to execute the next five years, then we're gonna be on track for our five year goal. And this is exactly the approach we're now gonna take in the goal setting tracker that I'm gonna share with you. And here it is, the goal setting sheet for 2024, so we can go out and we can hit the ground running in the new year. Now, you might have seen a similar sheet to this last year, but there have been some updates, which includes my roadmap uh, element to this spreadsheet. So do stay tuned and I'm going to walk you through both sheets. Now, to start us off, I'm going to follow what I've just talked to you about, which is the 514 method, which is obviously breaking things down to five year goals, one year goals, quarterly goals. And I'm also going to follow the four pillars of goal setting that I use in my own life, which is income, investments, lifestyle and health. OK, now the income section hopefully goes without saying that this is the money coming in. So this might be our work. It might be money from investments. It might be side hustles, anything that falls under that category. Investments is more about the assets or the investments that we need to go out and acquire in order to try and build our long term wealth. Lifestyle being 
holidays, cars, or anything that we do for enjoyment. And then of course, health being our health, our well-being, our livelihood. So not only physical, but mental, what can we do to make ourselves the, the best version of ourselves in terms of our health and our mental well-being? So going through this sheet, I haven't added too much to it. That is for you to do once you download this document. I will put a link in the description below so that you can download it. All I've done is put a couple of quick examples so that you understand how to use it, which is hopefully fairly straightforward. So to start us off, I've put a £3,000 profit per calendar month from property. So this person or this example, this person wants to earn £3,000 passive income from property and that is their income goal over the next five years. This might be to replace a job, maybe they work full time, their income is £3,000 or maybe it is to supplement that and now they can therefore go and live a more extravagant lifestyle or something along those lines. Now in order to achieve that £3,000 profit per month, this person is going to aim for 10 buy to lets, which will hopefully get them the majority of the way there. Most buy to lets earn, let's say 250 to 300 pounds profit per month. And over the time that you hold them, they tend to make more and more profit because perhaps the house goes up in value. Maybe you pay some of that debt down. Maybe the interest rate comes down and the rent goes up. So as time goes on, buy to lets tend to become more profitable. Therefore, we hope that 10 buy to lets over the next five years should lead to £3,000 per month in profit. So that is the goal over the next five years. So then if we break that down into the next 12 months, what should we do over the next you know, one year, 12 months, in order to work towards that bigger five-year goal of 10 buy to lets? Well, it's to go out and get two buy to lets so that we don't have a year in the future where we maybe need to go and get five in one year or 10 houses in one year we're gonna break it down into bite-sized chunks. And if we go out and get two buy-to-lets every year over the next five years, we're gonna hit that goal. All we have to do is be consistent, and actually this shouldn't massively impact our lives too much in terms of stress and workload and having to be too creative, let's say. Now, if we take that one-year goal, we break it down into quarters. Obviously, we need to try and decide what quarter of the year we want to go out and find that buy-to-let. Doesn't necessarily mean complete on it, but it might mean to actually just find it, have an offer secured, and uh, and then obviously get it into our pipeline, we could say. So in this example, maybe we'll go out and try and find that first one in quarter one, in January, February, or March, and then the second one in quarter three. So it allows for a bit of time for us to be able to complete on that first one. Then we go out, hit the ground running, do the same again with that second one, okay? So that is breaking down the investment side of things, the property goal there. Now looking at a different example for health, well, let's say that maybe it's me. Maybe I want to go out and gain four kilograms of muscle over the next 12 months, over the next year. Well, although I don't need to gain muscle because I'm a, I'm a big unit anyway, uh, joking, obviously, if I wanted to hit that goal, I then need to break it down because I'm not going to be able to do it in one month. But if I tried to do it in one month, I'm probably just going to put on four kilograms of fat. And although I would enjoy eating like that, I won't be able to hit that goal of putting on four kilograms of actual muscle. So instead, what I need to do is break it down quarter by quarter. In fact, it might just be a case of breaking it down and try to gain a kilogram of muscle each quarter of the year. And if I broke it down further into months, well, actually, there's not a huge amount I need to go out and do now. Maybe I only need to go out and put on sort of half a kilogram um, or you know a quarter of a kilogram in order to be well on my way to that goal each and every single month. So it just comes down to consistency and breaking it down into bite-sized chunks. Now that is the main overview. That is the one I would love everyone to use and fully utilize for your goals over the next 12 months. But moving over to the roadmap side of things, this is where things really get interesting because we need to break our goals down even further. I know that when I'm looking to achieve a goal myself or whether I'm mentoring someone to try and achieve a certain goal or an outcome, that we have far greater success rates if we actually think about what we are required to go and do to hit that goal. So what I've done here is create a roadmap, which really is just breaking down the milestones and tasks that we need to hit in order to get that larger goal. And again, I've broken it down into income, investment, lifestyle, and health. 
Now on that first sheet, I talked about that big goal of 10 buy to lets, which means we need to get two per year, which needs, means we need to get one in the first quarter of the next year and one in the third quarter. Well, let's just break this down into the first quarter. Let's use this roadmap quarter by quarter. So we're going to start it, let's say at the beginning of 2024, and I want to hit these goals really by the end of March 2024. So the first goal was to obviously find and secure that first buy to let. But what needs to happen if this is my first ever buy to let property and I've never done this before and I'm sitting here and I've got a bit of knowledge and maybe I've just joined my program, for example, what I would get them to do is go and watch and learn certain modules that I have put together in order for them to level up their investing knowledge. They need to have a certain level of knowledge about property investing in order to go out and do it and do it with confidence. The next task might be, well, actually, now we have the knowledge on how to find and analyse properties, well, now I just need to practice doing it. Just like a sports person would go out and they play games at the weekend, that doesn't mean they take the week off, that means they train most days of the week to continuously become a better version of that sports person. And we need to be the property investing versions of that sports person. So we need to consistently practice analysing properties. So it becomes second nature. So the second task might be practicing to do that and so on and so forth. You know, opening a limited company, lining up a power team prior to viewings, booking a first trip, booking 10 viewings, you know, viewing 10 properties and then submitting five offers. And as we go down this list, you can use this roadmap to tick them off. And it's very satisfying. I've created this just for you so you can tick those goals off and then you can start to think about what other ones do you have? Okay, so that was just investments. What ones do I have for income? What ones do I have for lifestyle? What ones do I have for health? And you can break it down step by step so that each week you have certain goals that you want to go out and hit and then you can just tick them off. And as I said, it is very, very satisfying. And that is the goal setting sheet for 2024. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to download a copy, check out the description. There's a link in there. But until then, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.